In this video, I want to talk about why AI is dead and why AI is not dead. Let's jump in. Hi there, my name is Ruben Ugarte, and I'm an expert in data, decisions, and strategy. And naturally, the data portion always leads to the same topic, AI, machine learning. And uh, I wrote a blog post where I talked about how AI is dead, long live AI, and it's, a, it's an interesting topic and one that's always caused some controversy among clients and people, because I think a lot of the AI machine learning is really overblown uh, in the impact. Let me explain exactly what I mean. First, we need to understand that what we may see today as AI uh, can sometimes feel like deja vu, you know, AI machine learning really started in the 50s self-driving cars really started in the 50s and there's always been this hype this expectation that AI will completely change everything it will completely replace humans and lead to some kind of terminator like world and this is what we're all heading towards this is exactly what was started in the 50s and it didn't you know it didn't quite materialize then it happened again in the 60s and 70s and 80s and now we're here with the same thing so it kind of feels like we're having the same conversation over and over again and this time is different but the reality is some problems are really hard you know self-driving cars might take 50 years to be viable on the streets even though we see it today we may never see full self-driving cars you know um waymo has talked about how they never think the the highest level i believe mean, level seven can ever be achieved it doesn't mean self-driving technology will completely dead it just means it might not be fully viable even then not everyone might move to it it might just be a small percentage so ai has a lot of high blood expectations and it doesn't always fully play out that being said, there's, I think, one element of AI that's really powerful. I call it invisible AI, and we all are affected by it. Every time you use Google Maps to figure out a route, you know, it uses machine learning to try to figure out the best route possible. Amazon shows you orders or products based on, on machine learning. So we're seeing all this kind of invisible AI that we wouldn't know it. If you ask a regular consumer on the street, they wouldn't be able to tell you, you're right, this route the Google Maps gave me has been obviously been optimized by machine learning. Right? So there's all this invisible AI playing out, and I think that's really powerful. Now, a lot of it primarily comes from the big companies, Amazon, Google, Facebook. They have the resources to really invest in this, take this, uh, the models to where they need to be. And what we're seeing for smaller companies is they get access to a lot of this invisible AI through the software that they buy. If you look at some data tools, for example, we're now seeing a lot of reports built in with machine learning to help you find patterns and trends. But for someone who's using it, a data analyst, they don't need to know anything about the model. They just need to run the report and look at the results. We're seeing some email marketing software, for example, that will automatically test different subject lines and then show you the best one based on machine learning. Again, there's no need to know anything about how the model works. You just need to provide the subject lines and then let the software do the work. So I think this is really powerful for a lot of businesses. So what does this mean? It means as a company, you have to make a decision. Do you need to build your own models? Do you need to go the route of the Facebook and Googles and hire data scientists and data engineers and all that work to build unique models for your company or can you take advantage of most of the benefits by actually getting, a, getting them off the shelf, by getting this uh, invisible AI from bigger companies, whether it's in your email marketing software or your financial software or the way you manage stock and supply. There's all the things that I think out there that will now have this invisible AI. Now, someone has to write it. Companies have to write this to be available, but my expectation is that this will always be the minority of companies. So a minority of companies will build the majority of the uh, machine learning models that are used in, in practice practice in it every day. And most companies do not need to go down the route of hiring a data scientist and data engineer. There's this big push right now among all companies that you need to have this and build it out. And I'm seeing a lot of data scientists who are effectively coming in to build reports, to do reporting, which is a complete waste of time. You might as well hire a data analysts and save all the money. So think about this, right? Think about what is the actual role that you need machine learning to play in your business and how much do you need to invest in it with people versus just simply getting it off the shelf. And that's all I have for today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, share, all the things you can do on YouTube in the description box below. As always, you'll find a few links that you find helpful. First, the link to my first book, The Data Mirage. It's out everywhere. You can buy books, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, chapters if you're in Canada like myself. Second is a link to my newsletter, The Growth Needle. And that's where I share similar ideas like this, usually much earlier than when you see them in a video or a blog post. And it's in the text format and it's free. And third, Twitter, where I share uh, bite-sized ideas that you can take on data, decisions, strategy, and anything else that comes to mind. Until next time, talk soon.